The Pikmin series reached a new height of popularity with the release of Pikmin 4 and the re-release of all three prior Pikmin games on the Nintendo Switch. And this explosion of interest in the games has led to tons of new merchandise being released for the series. Today, we're going to look at one of the more interesting sets of items released in this new Pikmin boom, the official Pikmin wind-up toys. My name is Vantage, and today we're going to be looking at the entire set of these Pikmin wind-up toys, unboxing the complete kit, and taking a look at each of the individual models. If you enjoy the video and want to see more of this sort of content, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. That being said, without further ado, let's get right into it. The full box set of Pikmin wind-up toys features six toys, each based on a different enemy from the series. These enemies are sourced from all across the games, with four of the represented enemies first debuting in the original Pikmin, one coming from Pikmin 2, and one from the most recent entry at the time of this kit's release, Pikmin 4. Each of the models are fairly similar in size, and they all operate using the same wind-up mechanic, but the movement styles of each of the models differs based on emulating the in-game movement of the creatures as best as possible in real life. Let's take a look at each one of them now, opening them up one by one, and then taking a moment to watch each of them move. The first wind-up toy is of a Bulborb, easily the most iconic enemy in the series, and a creature almost as iconic as the titular Pikmin themselves. It sports the creature's classic spotted design and twin eye stalks, held up by its thin legs and two-toed feet. This bipedal wind-up toy moves by stepping forward one foot after the other. Unfortunately, I find that this Bulborb's movement is easily the biggest letdown of the entire set. While the actual model is beautiful, it can't support its own weight without the addition of clear base plates on each foot, and when wound up, the Bulborb isn't actually able to walk very far compared to the other models in the kit. That said, one benefit of the limited range of motion that this Bulborb has is that it is absolutely perfect for moving across my desk where I edit videos, and I have him there now as a little fidget for when I just want something to mess with. Either way, the toy is still a lovely trinket, and I had a lot of fun playing with it and just gawking at it as it moved. Let's watch it walk. The second toy of the set is the Yellow Wally Hop, which, in contrast to the Bulborb, has my favorite movement style in the entire set. When wound up, this beautiful round frog leaps into the air, emulating the distinctive hopping of this creature from the games, propelling itself with its large feet and tiny hands. I found he is so much fun to use, and his motions definitely have a ton of kinetic energy. Let's take a moment to watch it leap around. The third creature from this kit is an iridescent flint beetle, the third enemy so far that debuted in Pikmin 1. This pill-shaped insect rolls around on wheels that somewhat emulate the sporadic walking motions of its in-game counterparts. Though this enemy has been in every mainline entry in the series, it has been redesigned several times, and this specific design of this toy is lifted directly from its Pikmin 4 design. I really appreciate the shiny finish on this thing's body, it gives the plastic a very different feel from that of the other creatures. Let's watch it move. This next creature is another one of my favorites from the set of toys, featuring a similar leaping motion to the yellow Wally Hop, though this time far less stable given its singular leg. This wind-up toy is of course the Downy Snagret, a juvenile version of the Burrowing Snagret. Though the adult version of this enemy first appeared in Pikmin 1, this baby Snagret was introduced in Pikmin 4, and it's just stupid cute. The head of this model is fuzzy to the touch, though the body is the same hard plastic as the other toys. This creature hops along on its leg, and it's super unbalanced, adorably so. These creatures are depicted in Pikmin 4 to be newborns, with some of them literally hatching right out of their eggs in front of you when disturbed by Pikmin, so it makes total sense that they're less coordinated than some of the other toys here. Let's watch it hop along now. This next model is an orange Bulborb, and from what I can tell, he's just a reskin version of the Bulborb model we looked at first. While that is a little disappointing in some ways, I'm still happy to have six models rather than just five, and I definitely prefer the colors on this one to the regular Bulborb. He reminds me of some of my best memories playing Pikmin 3 and encountering these creatures. Let's watch him walk around now.
Last but not least, our final model is the Fiery Blowhog, which does not spew actual flame, I know. But it does walk around on all fours. While this model lacks the range of some of the other models, I find its four-legged trot to be rather impressive and fun to watch, and the model is particularly well-balanced as well. Let's take a look at him in action, shall we? Now that we've seen all of the toys on their own, let's try to get them all going together. It's a little harder to do than you'd expect. I have a helping hand from a friend with this task, and even still, we're struggling to get them all moving at once. It's a lot of fun watching them go, though, even if they try to run straight for the edge of my table sometimes. No, he's going on a cliff! These toys are really fun, and I'm really happy to have them, though they're far from my favorite piece of Pikmin merch. That honor still goes to the Jar Terrariums, which, if you haven't seen them, I've done a video covering them, which you can reach in the iCard up here. Fair warning if you decide to get this set for yourself, I gave myself a blister playing around with these toys, as I've rubbed on the skin of my hand with the wind-up mechanisms a bunch, so be sure to be careful if you plan on buying these and winding them up yourselves. Even if you're not particularly interested in the motion of these creatures, the models themselves are still really sturdy and high quality, and I'm excited to have them up on my shelf. Well, what do you think of these wind-up toys? Do you have any yourself? If you do, how do yours feel to play with? What do you think of the quality? Would you recommend them? Would you want to see more wind-up toys like this released for other enemies, or maybe even for other creatures such as Ochi or Moss, or even one of the leaders like Olimar? Let me know in the comments down below. That being said, I'll stop rambling and end things here. My name is Vantage, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Take care, and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye, everyone.